you guys welcome back to another video i hope everyone had an amazing day my name is Jai. if you're new welcome to my channel be sure to like comment subscribe all that great stuff we're back with another scary animated video from Wan Seas entertainment and this is that horrifying night changed my life so sit back relax and let's watch today's video is sponsored by blue heart love dating app this app will help you find your perfect love. Use our code WANSI50 to get a 50% discount on any plan, and you'll help our channel, too. Mm -hmm. So why don't you check out the link in the description? During the late 90s, I was at a very low point Welcome in my life. Sky. I was a drug addict wandering the streets of downtown Los Angeles, oh, Los Angeles. eating out of trash cans, sleeping under <clears> bridges, <throat> and asking random bypassers for spare change. Looking back, I have nothing but regret for that time in my life. But this story is about the incident that made me sober up and turn my life around. One night, I was sleeping under a secluded highway overpass. It was fairly isolated because of its location on the outskirts of the city and saw little to no police presence. My sleeping spot overlooked a concrete foundation so that had stretched that. on for about 50 yards. It was a pretty long walk to get back to the city from this area. So, after a long day of panhandling, I slipped into my sleeping bag and began to doze off. I was suddenly woken up by the sounds of screaming. I turned on my side to see a car parked under the overpass. There were no lights on, but the vehicle's windows were down, and I could tell that there was a commotion taking place inside the cab. Now, I know what you might be thinking. At first, I thought the same thing, too. Maybe someone was getting lucky. But these were not screams of pleasure. No, that's worse. They were screams of agony. I watched in horror as the passenger side door of the car then flung open, and a skimpily dressed woman exited the car. Mm. She was holding her leg and was trying her best to limp away from the car. I was frozen in place, almost not believing what I was witnessing. The girl was begging for her life as she awkwardly staggered away from the vehicle. The driver's side door then opened, and a figure emerged from the car. The person that emerged from the car then pointed a gun at the girl, then shot her. The fuck? I remember closing my eyes as soon as the gun went off, and then opening them to see the woman sprawled out on the ground. She oh, was on her wow. back, and the way her head was positioned was if she was looking at me. Her jaw was going up and down like she was trying to say something. The memory of seeing her like that, Man. well, it still really haunts me. The shooter made his way over to her. When he stepped into the light, I could see that he was wearing a dark hooded jacket with a... Oh, so that means if this guy was homeless, that means he he changed life around because he'll be able to tell the story. I just noticed that. And Dana hiding his face. He stood over her and just watched her for several seconds, mm -hmm. then finishing her off with the second shot. Man. I was absolutely petrified at what I had just witnessed. I was now sitting up in my sleeping bag with one hand over my mouth just trying my best to not make a sound. But what happened next was a whole new level of fucked up. The headlights of another vehicle at the opposite end of the overpass flicked on and drove up to the gruesome scene. At first I was relieved and I stupidly thought that these people were there to help, not even factoring in that a bystander wouldn't just casually drive up to the scene of a crime with a killer still there with a loaded gun. But things became clear to me once I noticed that the other vehicle was a black van. And things became even more clear once I saw three men wearing ski masks exiting the van, with one of them holding a video camera. These sick fucks were filming this entire thing. What the fuck? There was an exchange of words, and the other two men that exited the van walked over to the dead woman and grabbed her arms and legs, then proceeded to carry her body back to the car. The shooter had made his way over to the car before they got there, and the camera man stepped off to the side and filmed the entire thing. The shooter popped open the trunk, and the men heaved the corpse into it. The cameraman then joined them at the car for a nice close-up shot. The shooter then walked over to the van, then returned with two gas cans. The men doused the car in gasoline, and the shooter struck a match and threw it, and the car was instantly engulfed in flames. The foreman and myself watched as the car burned. As I stared into the fire, I became numb. I had apparently reached my scare limit, and now I was just angry. Angry at these animals for uh -oh. what they had done. Even if the woman was an addict or a hooker, 
No one deserves to die like that. Murdered under an overpass in cold blood. Right. The fact that there were others there filming the whole thing pissed me off even more. The four men eventually piled back into the van, then left. A short while later, I had emerged from the overpass and made my way to the nearest payphone to call the police. I don't think the police took me seriously at first, until I led them to the burning car. I was questioned for hours by detectives, and yes, they did suspect me. A homeless junkie of foul play, but I stuck to my story. Homeless asshole. They did keep me in a holding cell for a few days, which they probably couldn't legally do, but I honestly didn't really mind at all. Free showers and food. I was actually a bit bummed out when they eventually released me. I later These found out that there were similar killings in San Francisco and Sacramento, people. and that the perpetrators were wanted by the FBI. I don't know for sure if they ever caught them. I only hope that they did. After that night, I decided that I had enough of living on the streets. The fear I experienced inspired me to get my shit together, finish college, and become an English teacher. I'm proud to say that I've been sober for over 23 years. That's Sometimes weird. seeing the ugliest side of humanity. Well, I think that's the cure. My problem is why would the policeman accuse a homeless person to do these things? It just it doesn't make sense to me. How can a homeless he's homeless and you gotta blame him because he is homeless. That's why so he took advantage of that and it's it's sad what that girl go through, but damn. You know, damn, damn, damn. So tell me guys what you think about this video. Be sure to like the video, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Check out my check out my game channel in the description below and all my social medias and have the most amazing, wonderful, grateful day. And until next time you guys.